I work in an un unusual way, um, which I've always worked in, and it comes from a particular place and uh, that I maybe is tedious to recite. But uh, what it involves is that I, I know I'm going to do an adaptation of a certain text. So I, ha I have that text or versions of that text, but I do not write the script for it until I'm in rehearsal. Now, it still has to be designed before we go into rehearsal. That's just how it works in the theater, and that's a very good thing, because the design tends to influence how I adapt the script. But the other big influence on how I adapt the script is my company, is who I'm working with. And I get very inspired in the room by them, by their personalities. And in a simple way, I can say, if someone can sing really well, suddenly I'll put in a, I'll, a song. If someone's a very good tumbler or acrobatic, then we must have that in the show. I try and lean into their talents and their personalities. Um, it's a, it feels risky for people working with me this way who've never done it before because they enter the process, maybe they know one character they're playing, one thing they're doing, they don't know anything else. And there's no lines to study, there's no beginning and end point that they know. We don't even know if it's one or two acts sometimes going in. Um, in they, they'll know the, the big named character, Madam White Snake, and the husband, and the monk, and Greeny, Green Snake. They will all be named. They'll know they're playing those. but they won't know sort of anything else. Just as in the Odyssey, Odysseus and Penelope and Athene and a few others are named, but they're also going to play lots of other parts, some of them, and everyone else is going to play everything else. And um, I don't ask the, the cast to improvise in terms of speaking anything or writing anything, per se. Um, I do that in between the hours of rehearsal every night. It's the exact same process as writing a play, except that that time period of writing the play is on top of the rehearsal time period. That's the only difference. I'm still writing it. Um, but they do, I do ask the actors to improvise images. I draw from them physically. And very often, they're reading the source text uh, voraciously themselves. And for instance, in Arabian Nights that I've done an adaptation of, I, there are two stories in there that were brought to me by actors saying, have you read Aziz and Aziza? And have you read The Contest of Generosity? And it's because they want to be in them. But that's a great sign. And I wouldn't then take those in if I didn't think there was a place. But they pulled me to those. So in, in that way, they are co-authors. But they're not co-authors in terms of like, actual lines of, of dialogue. But they're everything to me. The company is. Um, is, is such inspiration I, in somewhat the negative sense, too. If I don't, it, sometimes I'll go in thinking, well, I'm definitely going to do this episode from Journey to the West, which is a 3,000 page Chinese epic that I've done. And I'll say, I'm definitely doing this, this episode. And I think so and so would be good at that. As, as rehearsal goes on, I go, you know what? I don't think that's going to work with that person. And I don't do the episode. And no one's the wiser. You know, I haven't taken anything away from anyone because I've never actually mentioned it to them. Mm. You know, um, in certain ways, White Snake is a much, it, 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 it's an easier project than some I've done because the arc of it is doable in an evening. Some of the things I've done, like if you say the myths of Ovid or all, the stories of the Arabian Nights, those are, there's 384 stories in the Arabian Nights in the edition I used. Y you're going to just use a handful of those. Um, and so you're having to find the structure, what order to put those episodes in, or in myths, what order to put them in to best effect, or fairy tales, what order, what's the structure of the evening. Here, it's different. It's like when I've done the Odyssey or this. Th there is a structure that is doable in an evening. The story can be told in an evening, and the same characters you know, follow, follow through from beginning to end. So the burden of like, what should I, you know, what story should I do next? Should I go to a sadder, stat, sadder myth now or wait, those are too close together. No, wait, the same actor just did the lead in that story. I can't put them as the lead in this story. Oh, you know, all of that is, is gone. I, I know the territory much better. And that's an that's a enormous relief. Now, within that, this story has many different versions. I will be deciding sort of some versions start later in the story, end earlier, et cetera. I will be deciding that, but that's kind of, that's not that much compared to these phenomenal amounts of other decisions, structural decisions that I'm usually making when it's a kind of literally an infinite text, a kind of limitless text. And I'm carving out an evening from that. This has a beginning point and an end point which is achievable in an evening. The, the reason for this process is, um, you know, all to do with my own uh, personality. 
and the way I became a director, which is I did not become a director through directing classes or through plays, but through a combination of performance art class and obsessive reading and interest in reading and the department of what was then called the Department of Interpretation at Northwestern University, which teaches sequences of courses on the performance of poetry, the performances of nonfiction, performance of essay, performance of biography, performance, you know, all non dramatic texts in both solo and group terms. My department isn't that so much concerned with that anymore, but when I was an undergraduate, I kind of ended up combining a really big interest in nonverbal means of artistic expression, you know, stories that are told not through conversations, but through image, sound, and music, and how, emo how profoundly emotional those stories could be with, without someone saying anything. And then combining that with like a obsessive storytelling uh, fascination. So, you know, for instance, the Arabian Nights, what could be more narrative? It's, it's about someone telling stories to save her life. And yet within that, our modes of telling are sometimes nonverbal and physical and you know, images and objects and things like that, and sound and music and light, all the tools of the theater besides speech. You know? And I, I feel like in my shows, I sort of oscillate between a kind of hyper-narrativity, including the presence of a narrator, very often, especially in earlier work, and then no narrative, like it goes off the rails. I've, I've had improvised sections in parts of my shows, improvised movement in parts of my shows sometimes. So it, it goes between those poles of a kind of like celebration and presence of the act of narrative because of what it can bring. It can tell you the inside of thought and it can speak metaphor and it's such beautiful language and it can speed things along really quickly and then something that's actually not even telling a, a story at all. I think, and I think that's kind of the you know, two poles that my work kind of vacillates between a little bit, or that's the odd territory, odd oppositions that it has, that it has in it.